Happy New Year! Mr. McCoy back with the first edition of Mr. McCoy's weekly log for 2017. It's issue number 20, and I'm sitting outside the hideout for Clock King. However, apparently the previous villain, Mr. Freeze, left us in the deep freezer. I'm going to be going inside in just a moment to tell you all about the events for this week. It's entitled Clock King's Crazy Crimes, and this issue will be delivered to you for the week ending January 6, 2017. Please stay tuned. Yes, this week's villain is Clock King, and it's time to talk about what we have accomplished for this week of January 4 through January 6. In math, we continued to focus to explain patterns in the placement of the decimal point in decimal division. We also honed in on where to place zeros in the quotient. In reading, we worked to summarize and make generalizations about turn-of-the-century champions which featured Jack Johnson, a world heavyweight champion, and uh, Booker T. Washington, a defender of equal rights, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the mother of equality for all women. In writing, writers don't add details to their writing simply because they are true. They add details because they are important to their text. And it's a fact that we learned as we reconsidered the finer points of our memoir writing. We also work to reread what we've written thus far, drawing on all that we know to revise. Coming next week, students will have the opportunity to begin laying the groundwork for their monumental research report, which could feature the Civil War or industrial growth or westward expansion. In social studies, we sought to identify how the United States added new lands in the late 1800s. This led to how William Seward helped the United States purchase Alaska from Russia. And we also learned about Queen Lilikwalani and the conflict that led the United States to acquiring Hawaii. And in science, the question was, what are cells? We differentiated between plant and animal cells and compared the layout of Liberty Oaks Elementary School to a giant cell. We also explored how cells work together by focusing on cells and tissues. Yes, the time has come for us to move on, but Clock King will continue to pervade this 20th edition of Mr. McCoy's Weekly Law. Here we are in the depths of winter, but spring conferences will be coming on March 14 and March 16. And in this week's edition, there is a link to the conference schedule. Be sure you reserve the time that you want. Uh, I can't wait to meet with you and your child at that spring conference. No one really likes getting constructive criticism, yet with regard to children, giving constructive criticism is not an option. There is an article in this week's edition entitled Giving Constructive Criticism and it gives suggestions such as remember your child has feelings. Also have your message very very clear before you give it. If you don't have an idea of what you are trying to convey then all you are doing is criticizing your child by venting. Be sure you know exactly what it is that you want your child to improve upon and keep the emotion out of it. And then there is also an article entitled Getting the Message to Your Child and it gives suggestions for how to do that. Criticize the behavior, not your child. Don't label your child. Don't say things like, you always forget to pick up your things and so forth. You're a sloppy person. Uh, don't use labels. Give your rebuke, give your rebuke privately. This should not be something that's done in front of his or her brothers or sisters or when other children are around. Offer an opportunity to correct the wrong. In Gotham City we are always saying here is an opportunity to redeem yourself. That is also important. And 
deliver the criticism with love. Say it in a way that, like I mentioned before, has no emotion attached to it. It's just the facts. This is what you need to improve on. So be sure to check out that pair of articles. Yes, A Family Apart has continued this week. Be sure to check out the links in this week's edition. A Family Apart will continue through next week as well and finish the following week. And then our next fantastic read aloud will begin. Report cards will be sent home on Friday, January 13. Be sure to look for your child's report card in his or her Friday folder. Please sign the bottom of the report card. You only need to return the bottom portion. You may keep the actual report card itself. That's Friday, January 13. There is an amalgam of great websites in this week's edition. One of those is The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. From time to time, we have talked about that in class and made connections between that and what we are studying and between that and the children's lives. There is also a link to Light Energy and Light Waves. It was our most recent science topic right before Christmas vacation. Your child would enjoy it. Uh, exploring that website as well. There is also a link to fun grammar games and there is a link to a math website called Gamateria which gives your chance your child the opportunity to become even better at math. So please check out all of those websites. Here we are in January and the homework continues on Tuesdays and Thursdays there's an article entitled, Your Role in Your Child's Homework. It says, recognize that your role is helper, not doer. Sometimes in our quests, and I find myself doing the same thing, to help our kids succeed, we get too carried away and provide too much help. Make sure your child is doing the work and not you. Uh, be sure to check out that article as well. Next week, the featured villain will be the infamous Puzzler, and uh, it will be issue number 21 entitled, The Puzzles Are Coming. Be sure to tune in. It will be delivered to you before Friday, January 13. It will be a puzzling week.